Welcome to part five of Visions of the 21st Century, whose topic is the integrated human being. Through the works of Carl Jung and others, we have a vision of the stages of human consciousness, which begins in the transpersonal realm, separates off and differentiates an ego identity, and after the midlife crisis, may achieve an integration of different parts of the human psyche. An ethical foundation to the psyche exists, founded on the self, a central archetype of meaning and order in the psyche. Welcome to part five of Visions of the 21st Century. There is an implied ethical system in this new vision. Oshpun, he shows from the point of view of depth psychology, a progress which I think Jung would agree with and many in the transpersonal field, a progress of the human being from an original oneness and then some primal repression developing inside human beings, typically at the age of four and five, in the Freudian analysis, the latency period, which lasts maybe up to the midlife period when things become reassessed again in the human being and a new spiritual or integrated vision becomes possible after the midlife crisis. Washburn has explained this process, this, in, this process of integration, first of all separation from, from the oneness in our early infancy, and then our development of our ego, which is a separated state, separates from the unconscious. And as this ego develops and thinks it becomes master, until it reaches the midlife period, when it contemplates death or it contemplates its decline, then its mastery is questioned. And at that point, the ego may relinquish its apparent illusory dominance and the greater unconscious and the archetypes and the world of the unconscious and the world of the spiritual nature of a human being may enter in, including love and including better relationship to other people, etc. So an integrated spiritual human being becomes part of the natural development of the human being across the life cycle. As it were, we start in this state, some transpersonal state, we separate off from it when our ego develops, when we become this repressed human being who is separated from our essential selves, but our ego and our consciousness and our education and our cognitive development and our understanding, etc., have developed. But that is all developing, is it not, our ego? It's all developing our separated state. And often the child is told in its educational system, you need to do this for yourself, so you'll have a better job, so you'll have a better education, so that you will benefit. It's all about the ego, isn't it? It's all about you, or me, me, me. The integrated human being is not existing at this, at this stage, in, these, in the majority of the world's educational systems. Now, therefore, the vision of an integrated human being across the lifespan which can include spiritual components, is possible. In this new metaphysics, there is an implied ethical system which is inherent within the human being. This was shown most definitively and persuasively by Carl Gustav Jung, who showed and analysed throughout his many, many patients that in the world of dreams of many individuals, if not most, there seems to be some process organic natural inbuilt process by which the psyche is pushing towards its own development and realization and integration. A five-part process is envisaged frequently which is represented as the persona, the shadow, the animus anima, individuation and the self as it were stages of the development of the psyche. In the early stages typically in therapy, psych depth psychotherapy, when we take a good look at ourselves and try and change. The persona is one of the first things we become aware of, how we present ourselves to the world and how really that is not our real selves or our true self. Next stage might be the shadow. The examination of shadow is vital to understand the human being and ourselves. We have our parts of ourselves we present to the world, for example our persona, but our shadow may be quite different. We may have destructive or aggressive or unpleasant components to ourselves which we scarcely admit. Not only for individuals does this shadow exist but also for whole countries. If we look at Germany in the Second World War, Adolf Hitler and the Nazis, we see the typical movement of the shadow. Some parts of the national psyche 
in the social unconscious in this case, the national unconscious, humiliated and defeated after the First World War, yet wishing to become a narcissistically compensated opposite, the grandiose Superman, the Aryan Superman who can dominate, indeed exterminate other peoples, in which the shadow, the humiliated parts of ourselves, become projected into others and then one can try and wipe them out or oppress them. In the case of the Nazis, we see a system of ethnic cleansing, which has existed also in many other parts of the world, but had a particular severity with the Nazis. This projection of the shadow and the humiliation that one feels within, making others feel it, becomes part of a system of evil that we saw in the Second World War, and particularly embodied in Adolf Hitler. So the shadow is important as a collective thing to understand and also as an individual. The next stage is sometimes represented in the Jungian stadial development, that is, development through different stages, as the animus and anima, when the animus, which is the f for Jung, was the masculine part of the, the, the woman, and the anima, which is the female part of the man, should be incorporated and understood. So in a typical male person, maybe quite aggressive and assertive, then there might be other sides to his personality which is embodied in the female whom he projects onto his soul, his anima, and vice versa with the female. The incorporation of these unconscious parts of ourselves which may be even contrasexual, different, as it were, gender components into a more integrated human being who integrates these different components, who combines them in a more harmonious manner, was surely a complicated or disputed um, finding or proposition by Jung, but which collectively has had great implications in the Western world particularly, as the female parts of men have had to be integrated and the more masculine parts of women have allowed to be expressed. So we, we, we find this acted out on the collective level as well as just in individual therapy. The next stage that is often proposed in the Jungian system is the movement towards individuation, the becoming of a distinct individual who combines the conscious and the unconscious. This integration of different parts of the human being, our consciousness, listening to the unconscious, integrating it, for example the world of dreams, and being able to incorporate it into ourselves until it becomes part of ourselves and our consciousness is no longer the dominant force in our psyche but is in a dialogue with the unconscious and indeed often subordinate to it and listening to it. This individuation process, this combination is a movement towards integration and indeed typically in the last part of life or the second part of life certainly the movement towards the integration at, a f at the total level, the integration of the self in which the, all the different components of the human being, you can see this for example in mandalas where different parts of the system are incorporated in these beautiful circles drawn by Tibetans, for example. These mandalas represent the totality, the wholeness and the completeness of the self to which the human psyche is somehow orientated towards, pushed as it were from within, unconsciously pushed towards this integration process of our consciousness with the unconscious. So the consciousness having been separated off now becomes integrated into a greater whole. But finally I would like to take a vision not of the 21st century but one that was curiously incorporated which is the dancing Shiva but incorporated into the CERN laboratory as a gift from India which is of the dancing Shiva which shows a great circle which is the space-time continuum of the cosmos and the hair of the yogi who is the dancing Shiva stretching out to the edges of the cosmos. That is the act of contemplation and the act of consciousness stretching out to the beginnings of our universe and the full extent of our universe which we've seen also in modern science as well as in contemplation and mysticism. The multi-handed dancing Shiva, the drum and the fire bringing life into existence and destroying it. The other two hands, one a sign of acceptance and the other pointing elegantly to the poise of the, the feet of the dancing Shiva, of the legs. One leg is balanced on the mighty dwarf, which is the ego, 
The ego, therefore, is subordinate to the greater self, who is connected to the cosmos and who is a totally integrated human being. I've suggested that if ever an image were to be sent out into space of the greatest aspiration of our human species, it should be this one rather than any other religious or spiritual symbol created by the human race. Mm -hmm.